Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity C Sharp bite size tutorial. In this video, I'll be covering events as a way to update UI, though there are other uses for it. If you don't know what events are, I'll be explaining that in this video. Stay tuned, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. So the example in today's video, we have a player with a health script, and then we have some UI with a UI script, okay, to update the health UI. Whenever I press spacebar, the player takes 10 damage, okay, like so. And we see the actual image updates to basically change how big it is, and then the actual text updates too, to reflect how much health they're on. The UI changing is driven by events, so effectively the player listens for input, when the player hears the spacebar, it then takes damage. From taking damage, it raises an event to say, I took damage. And then the UI says, I care when you take damage, so I'm going to update the UI accordingly. So we have the player taking damage, it actually sends out an event to anyone listening, this UI is listening, and it receives some data, and the data it receives is the player's health and their max health, and then they can update the UI. That event is only triggered and only sent when the player takes damage. A lot of beginners will have code that basically says, you know, every frame, read the health, read the max health, and update the UI. But you don't want to be updating UI every single frame when you don't need to. For example, with health, it only updates when your health changes, and maybe on your UI somewhere else you have some uh, currency, maybe gold or, you know, coins or whatever. That only updates when you gain or remove coins. So you want to use events to update that kind of UI rather than doing it every single frame. Let's get into the code example. So we've got two scripts, the first one is the health behavior, I'm going to keep this video short and bite sized as the name suggests, and just go through each line explaining what it does and how it all works. So we set the float for the max health in the inspector, that's quite simple. Then we have the event, so the event is public because we need to subscribe to it from other classes. This is the event keyword, and then there's different types of events you can use, there's action, event handler, probably others, we're just going to stick with event handler, okay? So. Event handler allows you to pass in a type. So this is the class, which I'm going to show you in a second, that has the data for our event. So when the event is raised, you could have no data or you can have some data. So this would uh, just have no data, okay, as an event uh, handler, but we want to pass some data through. So we pass in a health changed event args. So if I scroll to the bottom, we have that here. It's simply a class that inherits event args and it has the data that we are sending through the event. So whenever we raise an event to say the health has changed, we send through the health and the max health, okay? Go back up. So we're saying we have an event called on health change. People can listen to this event. And whenever we raise it, we send through this class so they can read our health and max health. Then over here, we have a getter, like I showed in the last video, uh, for max health. So people can read our max health, but they can't set it, okay? It just returns the max health. And then for our actual current health, we have a backing field. This is another property like in the previous video. So this is where our actual health value is stored. And this is how people effectively interact with our health. So when they try and read this, we just return health. But when they try and set this, we clamp it between zero and max health. That makes sure that whenever people change our health, we can't go below zero and we can't go above our max health. So it clamps it between those two values. And then we raise an event. So this is the syntax for how we raise the event. We say the name of the event question mark in case it's null, dot invoke. So this only gets called if the event isn't null, effectively, um, if anyone is listening, we've got any subscribers, then we will raise. We need to pass through the sender and the event args. So the sender is us, so we just pass in this keyword. And then we pass through the change, uh, sorry, the event args. So we make a new instance of it. And remember it has health and max health. So we set health equal to our health and max health equal to our max health. So that's the syntax just for changing health. So whenever health is changed, we, we change it and then we raise an event. The rest of the code just says when we start, set health to max health, simple. Keep in mind from setting this to max health, the event is raised, okay? And then every single frame, this is just the way I've done it for this example. I say, well, if a uh, space key wasn't press this frame return, but if it was remove 10 health, okay? I made an add and a remove method though add isn't being used in this example. So I'm saying when I try and remove some health, make sure the value is valid, okay? Because if it's uh, below zero, then, you know, if it's a negative value, it should be positive. So these just make sure it's positive. And then I add or remove the value. Notice how I'm using uppercase health, not lowercase health. If I was to change lowercase health, no events would be raised, no clamping would be done. That's all done in here. So make sure to use uppercase health. And then that's it, to be honest, for this class. Then over here, this is the class that listens for the event. So I've just called it events example, though it's technically like health UI. So I need reference to a health behavior. That was the other script we have over here. I need reference to one of these to know who to listen to. Because if your player, if your game, sorry, has 10 players, which one do you show on the UI? Um, if you just have one player and you can drag it in the inspector, feel free to do that. Though if your game spawns players in later, 
and you actually need to set this at runtime, then you'll need some way to do that, obviously. You'd perhaps have this script um, listening for when the player respawned. When the player respawned, you set it. You know, there's different ways to handle that, but I'm going to avoid um, that complex stuff for this video. So for the UI, we have the health bar image. We make that go bigger and smaller to display how much health we have as a percentage. And then we have the health text to actually show you the values of your health and max health. Then like in the callbacks video, we use on enable and on disable to subscribe and unsubscribe from the health changing. So this is the syntax for subscribing and unsubscribing from an event. We actually need to give it a method that takes in um, object sender and health event args E. Now you can actually change the words sender and E, but I'm gonna keep it the same as they do, okay? And all this means is that um, whenever this event is raised, we call this method. And then this unsubscribes meaning, okay, when we disable the script, we no longer call this whenever the health is changed. But what it does is it updates health bar and this method uh, doesn't care where it's getting called from. It just is given a health and a max health and it sets the text to be, um, and then you round the health and max health. So it'll say like 10 out of 100. And then the fill amount is health over max. So it uh, sets the fill amount to be a percentage. This value needs to be between zero and one. So yeah, I update the health bar whenever the health changes, but I also update it on enable. The reason being, when the health bar is disabled, the player could still take damage. Imagine your health bar turns on um, after you've taken damage, well then you'll need to make sure it's updated. Otherwise it would only update when you actually take damage afterward, but you want it to always display the right amount. So we update and then subscribe. One thing to note is that every way you subscribe to an event, you should also unsubscribe. Now I could do a separate video on memory leaks and garbage collection, but the main problem it can cause you without getting into those reasons is that if I subscribe and I don't unsubscribe, so let's imagine, let's imagine the health bar UI turns on, then it turns off, then it turns on again, it's actually subscribed twice, which means now your UI updates twice without um, unsubscribing. So then if you did it again, it would update three times. So every time your health changes, you'd update the UI three times and that would go on forever. You don't want that, obviously. So make sure you unsubscribe and subscribe so that you're only listening when you should be. So for those of you who already watched my videos, you'll know that down below in the description, I have a link to this project if you want to go find that out. But I'll quickly uh, cover how I set this up. So we essentially have a player with the health behavior set to 100. Now, obviously, I could set that to 50 if I want. And if I just stop and start again, oops, no, I changed that in play mode. So I'll have to go out of play mode, change it, press play. Now the player's health will be set to 50 when I press play. OK, I press space, deals 10 damage. Then over here on the UI, I've got the events example script with the player dragged in for the health behavior, then an image for the health bar UI and some text for the text. So I've got a canvas, scales to my screen size. If you want to pause at any point and read this or open up the project yourself and have a look through. I've got an image background here, okay? So this is the background of the health bar. Then I've got an image on top of that for the actual health itself, okay? And this is what gets updated to reflect my health. So if I just undo that, it's at 0.8 right now because I'm at 80% health. Then I've got some text on top of this. As I said, pause and read these values if you want or just get the project and look through it then. So if I press space again, I'll go down to 30 health. If I turn off the UI and then press space two more times, I'm on 10 health, okay? Now, if I actually look at the uh, image, you'll notice how it hasn't updated because it doesn't need to. Why Why would the UI need to update when it's disabled? Now, if I re-enable it, it's updated to 10. You go back down and you see over here, it's updated. And that's all because of the code here that basically says whenever we enable it, update, then subscribe, or whenever dis we disable, unsubscribe. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It would help a lot. Let me know down below what you want to see next. And upcoming this Friday, there is the Unity beginner live stream I'm doing over on Unity's channel themselves, along with Andre from Mix and Jam. Please check it out if you have the time or if you want to learn something new. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching everyone and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, Jean Ran, David McDermott, Exit Return Zero, Josh Folsom, Bearded Eye, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yoris Letter, Hades Orko, Rene, Budere and Mary Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.